Virtually every team leader or executive has at least one, the dreaded underperformer. That one person who takes up five times as much of your time as anyone else on the team. They require so much more attention and produce far fewer results. The inevitable question for many leaders becomes how to handle them. Or maybe even, should I continue to invest energy into developing them? While those questions are key, I submit that the most important question should be, why are they underperforming in the first place? As a corporate trainer, one of the biggest mistakes that I see leaders make is attempting to correct an underperformer without first diagnosing the cause of the poor performance. Just like a doctor wouldn't start evaluating a patient by prescribing medication, a leader similarly must first ask the right questions to try to determine the underlying root cause before selecting a course of action. In my experience, poor performance is a function of one or more of three elements. Lack of awareness, lack of ability, or lack of will. Unfortunately, an employee must have all three, awareness, ability, and will, in order to perform a particular skill well. If any of the three are missing, performance will suffer, and each cause requires a very different corrective action approach. Let's examine each one. First, awareness. The simple truth is that a person isn't going to work on a problem that they don't see themselves. We all know people who think they're a great cook, but they're not. They think they can sing, but they can't. Their perception of their skill level or effectiveness may not sync up with yours. So checking their level of awareness is critical. If you think they bomb during their client presentation, don't just start berating them for the misstep. Instead, ask them how they think it went. Check for awareness. You should respond to the situation differently depending on the level of awareness they display. If it's clear that they don't have a clue that there is a skill or performance gap, it's critical to create awareness either through direct candid coaching, 360 degree feedback, or some sort of objective assessment. Second, ability. If the team member has awareness of a skill deficiency, but they don't have the ability to perform the skill, even if they're motivated to, they may be quite frustrated. Take myself for an example. I may be aware that I can't dance well enough to become a professional ballerina at 46 and desperately want to dance professionally, but awareness and motivation aren't enough. I must also have the ability. In this case, training or mentorship may be the appropriate course of action. Third, motivation. This is perhaps the most difficult cause to address. After all, someone can know they have a skill gap or performance problem, they can possess the ability to perform better, but for some reason, they just won't. Obviously, sending someone with a motivation problem to a training course is like putting a band-aid on a broken bone. Not the right solution for the problem. Instead, the key to addressing motivation problems is to first identify why they're not motivated. If they don't feel valued, they may need rewards and recognition. If they don't enjoy the work, they might need a different role or project. But the problem could be unrelated to their specific task. Maybe they're having problems at home and those issues are taking priority. Maybe they don't like someone they're working closely with, or maybe they feel underpaid in general and they've just checked out emotionally as a result. Clearly, there could be a number of reasons why they're not motivated. The real fix lies in figuring out why. Here's a nice summary of what we've covered. 
For more tips on managing underperformers and other leadership issues, please consider one of our leadership courses. We'll cover topics like delegating the right way, understanding three key leadership styles and learning secrets of the thoroughbred leader, using three magic questions to clarify task assignment, adopting communications best practices to avoid misunderstandings and team dysfunction, managing the multi-generational team, using team charters and ground rules to help get your team on the same page, applying project management principles that every leader should have, and providing leadership during times of change. Most importantly, it won't be another one of those dreadfully boring presentations or training sessions where you'd rather watch paint dry. Whether you're interested in a presentation for a team retreat, conference, or lunch and learn, or a half or full day training workshop, the session will be highly interactive and packed with practical tips that participants can begin using immediately. Contact us today at info at professionalismmatters.com or call us at 678 777 7188